Damien Maffei, and you are listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for the movie rain. Tonight's victim is actor Damien Maffei. That has done Wrong Turn, the 2021 film, The Strangers Pray at Night, and Time's Up, amongst others. Hello. Hello. So tell us a little bit about the, the current Wrong Turn film. This one's a little bit of a different direction slightly and having to be involved with it, especially from an existing franchise. Can you tell us a little bit about your involvement with the story itself without giving too much away? Yeah. I talked to director Mike Nelson a while back. I think before anyone else was on, he, he was a fan of The Strangers Pray at Night. Uh, reached out to him and I was like, you're doing the new Wrong Turn movie. And I was like, you know, throw me in there. Get me running around as one of those uh, those knucklehead cannibals. And he was like, oh, it's not really. What's going on there? And uh, I looked at the script. I was like, wow, it's really quite different. And I thought it was fantastic. James Harris and John Wagner, the producers from The Strangers Pray at Night, and John was on Holland, came on board to Wrong Turn, so it was just people I'd worked with before. We're going to get in there, it's just where. So there wasn't many parts I was right for. Really, the part I wanted to play is really the only part I could play. I was originally called in there for a different part, the character of Nate Rhodes. They decided to go quite a bit older than me. So I wound up playing um, Morgan, a.k.a. Deer Skull, in there. And uh, it was shot in Ohio, which is where, you know, the Ohio-Kentucky area, which is where we filmed Strangers by Night and Hall Up. So back there to do another one. I love that group. That director is fantastic, Mike Nelson. He's uh, a huge horror fan. Like, he show up every day, kind of, and, and immediately try to find him, just see what shirt he was wearing. Like, all the, you know, it was like movies I knew, but these shirts I'd never seen before. Designed. So that was great, and it did hurt that he's a uh, brilliant passionate filmmaker. Yeah, it was a really, really good, really good movie to be on. And the locations were very tough. Uh, it was probably the toughest shoot location-wise for anyone on that movie. Pretty great time, and I think the movie itself is fantastic. And I got to do something different, and certainly something that I haven't been doing film-wise. So I really appreciated, was flattered by the opportunity to uh, be a part that I was. Do you consider this more of a uh, kind of a uh, more of the other side of the world type? What's going on, on the other side of the woods type of uh, mentality of of this story rather than just looking at it slightly different direction as what we've already saw in the previous sequels? Very different. The, you know, the original writer and creator of the, of the first one just wanted to change it up. Having the opportunity to have a role reboot or a sequel to a franchise, especially one that's already been following, do you think it's still a risk career wise? The success of the previous films, do you think it's still a risk career wise? Was to even accept this added on to your to your career itself? Well, you know, that's a pretty good question. That's actually something I was just talking to someone else about. As far as me, my involvement in, um, in Wrong Turn, I think it'd be very hard for the actor to have that land on, on them. But, you know, for a director, it's pretty ballsy. It's pretty bold to jump in there, a remake or a reboot. You know, it's like two friends, Kevin Dennis, who did the Pet Cemetery remake. You know, when we found out they were doing that, I was like, wow, that's like good for you. Also, like, that's scary stuff because horror fans, God love them, many of them are going to go in there and never give it a chance. And then maybe in 20 years or something, they'll revisit it. But, well, maybe this wasn't that good. I mean, you got to really have a set of brass balls to jump in a beloved remake or reboot. And that's the other thing is that, you know, at least in America, I never heard anyone talk about the wrong term movies. Every now and then, the original would pop up in a discussion in a horror group. You know, one or two people would comment on it. But I mean, no one was talking about these movies here. The only reason anyone's talking about them now is because this movie came out. It's like, the, 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 you know, they call it a cash in. What is it cashing in on? I, I know it's very popular in Latin America and Brazil, and that's a different story. But, you know, I, I think it would be very hard for a reboot or a remake to have a real cataclysmic effect on an actor's career. It certainly isn't going to affect me. I mean, well, first of all, I'm, I've seen more positive reviews and words on Wrong Turn than negative. Just that, you know, the horror community is very loud. You know, fandom is very loud. You know, you see a lot of that because, you know, they vocalize it the most. I mean, even if it was, you know, lynched across the board, uh, it you know, wouldn't come down to me. My participation isn't that much. And nobody knows who the fuck I am anyway. I'm not going to show up at, like, a call in for something. Like, wait a minute, you're the guy from Wrong Turn. Get the hell out of here. But I mean, if you, you know, you, you got the genre fans who have a respect for it, who are, are making this thing, and the, the people who own the property allow the creatives to bring forth 
let their vision out there, then there's a good chance, you know, there's a good script. I mean, people, half, half the fans are still going to go in there and fucking hate it. I mean, that is a reboot or a remake to get behind, I think, you know, for me. You know, like, it, it, it was just this Silent Night, Deadly Night remake announced today. And I've been getting tagged in on a lot. I think someone started a petition to get me to play, even if no one knows what it's about, the remake, but just to get me to play, you know, like, say, the killer. And, I mean, I see the why behind that, you know, as I, I've been playing a lot of these killers. So I thought about it for a moment. I mean, if it's a if it's a cool piece, you know, that's a character who's not just, you know, the slasher villain, but he's also, you know, in theory, going through some things, some emotional things. You know, it is a chance for an actor to, to dive in there and, and, and do that. That is a property that I would certainly look further into it. It's also a property I know that people would just hate without giving it a chance. But that's something I'm willing to absorb, to do something I think is now, having to take, like, direction, direction is always important, obviously, but especially when it comes to character, but in order to uh, make, like, a uniqueness of its own, do you think applying a misdirection can also add uh, more depth sometimes, rather than just taking the traditional direction of characterization? Any character, you know, especially with movies, all that work at home, or, you know, wherever, because, you know, movies oftentimes just no rehearsal, and, you know, coming from theater, a lot of the character stuff comes out of doing it working on it and these things come out good things bad things you pick what's working for you and you grow it you know you do all this character work at home you bring it to the set and you know film directors some of them don't say anything to you some of them are a very strong vision of what they think the character is too much that's what they're there for you know is to, to work with you you should be open to any ideas they have and you as the actor take those ideas and is it something that you want to explore is it working for you or is it nonsense and then you can ignore it apply it but once you apply a direction like then it's out there then you're not going to be in the cutting room so they can use whatever they want so if you're just giving the director taking one for the team there you know that very likely will wind up in the actual movie so you know you got to be careful what you put out there misdirection wise i mean you know it's a it's an old actor trick to the director into thinking that your ideas are his kind of flip it around and put it on them so like yeah that was a great idea but you can find out what works for you is self-evolving with character better with the genre itself or evolving you as you progress through each character now obviously it's important to evolve as an artist and and as well as acting but when it comes to the genre itself when you've been in the genre when you've perform so many horror based characters and so forth do you think it's best to evolve with the genre or do you think it's best uh, to continue to evolve through each character after each character after each character evolve with each character i mean a particular genre do it truthfully that's when comedy is its funniest not when you you know rolling out a big fucking ham or making huge ass of yourself i mean some people might laugh at that but the comedy i like is always when it's done truthfully like real circumstances and, and horror you know like you can't just half-ass it just because you're in a fucking horror movie it's why the genre is, is where it is right now it's because it's still full of cheap movies with non-actors being trotted out just because they know that they knew the teens would show up for some boobs and blood don't change your performance or your tactics for a genre and i mean slasher movies I mean, I love them. More often than not, they don't allow for much character development. I mean, that's not necessarily the way it needs to be. Here's what I want to see in slash movies. I want to see fucking characters I give a shit about. Some way to do that. And it doesn't mean that the entire first act needs to be, like, you know, this deep dive into their, their lives or whatever. Just, like, likable people here there. Or, or wholly unlikable people, too. Characters you become invested in one way or the other. Because if you just trot down a bunch of people that you don't know their names, you can't tell them apart, who cares? Who cares if they get killed? And, like, that's all you're looking for is gore and whatnot. I mean, that's, that's one thing. But if all you're looking for is gore, still, why not have some characters you give a damn about? Like, someone you want to root for. But, I mean, it's understandable, though, because you yourself are going to lose interest as well, because if it is a point A, point B, it's almost like you're, you're just emptying out an existing trick box. Like, we, we've already seen this. We have already know what's going to happen. Oh, this has been used so many times. And it doesn't give you enough room to really build off of the character, because obviously that this is what it is, that type of genre. You, you already know what's going to happen in the story. And, and yes, the, the characters may not be very likable at all, because you already know it's kind of predictable. Okay, obviously, this is not interesting. This is not interesting. Oh, this we 
already know that. And you yourself don't even begun to even uh, perform throughout the story, and the audience themselves are going to lose interest as, uh, itself. And obviously, the audience is your biggest critic, of course, but they're going to lose interest as well. But yeah, obviously, you're going to get some likers. Obviously, you're going to get the ones that love blood, gore, boobs, and all that stuff. But for you, it, it doesn't reach your potential of how can you reach to that audience performing the serial killer or the victim or, or whatever it is that it involves within this particular film. Acting is acting. Well, absolutely. And uh, when, when it comes to like serving the community itself, and there's always risks and, and to yourself, and you know that, that's where you're having to uh, evolve and rather just being the, the staple of the whole thing because then, then obviously you yourself are going to be stale over time. Maybe your name is not going to be mentioned anymore or billed in other films well, later on. I always saw it out there and then people started referring it to me. And I know it's a completely, you know, it's a term of endearment. I'm honored. But, you know, like you're my favorite horror actor or, you know, it's like fans and then it'll be like neighbors or something or like friends of an aunt or something. Oh, you're the guy that acts in horror movies. I am allowed to do other things, and I can do theater. So I'm good theater for decades. I'm not only allowed to do horror movies, and I'm not only good enough to do horror movies. And that's really kind of where the thing comes from. It's like, oh, that person is only good enough to do horror movies. You know, it's like this stunt guy played the thundering lug now is kind of migrated on to other silly parts. The horror actor It's only good enough to do horror. Like, I love horror movies, you know lifelong and anytime I go to creatively push something or jump in something it's a horror movie you know I was like you know I can do other things I can do you know, comedy and stuff but I mean I don't feel that way anymore I mean I love the horror genre and the fans are tremendous they're also horrible uh, some of them which I used to be but you know it's, it's, it's just acting it should be actors if you can only do horror movies then you're probably not a very good actor Go ahead and play in any websites or anything that you care to add to that uh, so we can check out right now. Websites. Uh, yeah, Road Turn 2021 is all over the place now. You can rent it wherever you rent things or buy them. Uh, there's physical, really nice Blu-ray out there. I don't know where you walk in and buy it from, Best Buy, but it seems to be going quick. You can order it. I know they're all backed up there. Yeah, check out Road Turn 2021 and just... Be open to it, embrace it. Maybe you'll love it and it'll love you. Just follow me on social media or whatever, or follow the Time's Up social media accounts. You know, you up with it. There you have it, everybody. That is actor Damien Maffei. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.